Bold Dragon is designed to give us an opportunity to shake out in new territory, the terrain that we're not used to, and also to give the opportunity for each of the elements of the battle group to work together. It's a big battle group, so we're over 1400, so there's a lot of working parts, um, but there are very uh, well-designed lanes that the subunits go through to give them the opportunity uh, to get used to working with each other. So it's going well at this stage. There's been a renewed focus. Uh, I think it's given everyone a, a sense of purpose uh, and focus uh, on the threat and the importance of the role that we're doing out here. But the importance of what we do uh, and the strength of the coalition is unchanged since its inception. Uh, and that strength is very much in different nations with different capabilities uh, coming together with a shared sense of purpose. Working with the British here on Exercise Pro Dragon is uh, quite a good experience because it's the first time for us to work in interoperability with them and uh, we are integrated under their command. We have to improve our capacities on TTPs, I mean tactical techniques and procedures. We have to improve our counts to communicate better on the field and to show Estonian people, European people, that we can be ready to work together to defend uh, Europe in case of uh, a crisis. We are trained to work in, in the mountains in winter with uh, a cold weather in the snow. And here the terrain is pretty much like ours in France to continue our, our preparation for future operations. We work so with uh, a mechanized infantry company, the British uh, Bravo Company of the Royal Welsh, that is working on a other phase. But uh, we work together and uh, we, we have to, to prove our interoperability uh, today. So the, the Hunter Alpine Regiment, they specifically work in terrain like this, probably a bit more hilly, but you know, in the snow. So they, they've got lots of training to, to get through the snow. That the the sniper section they've got dismounted, so they've got a lot of manpower as well. So they're, they're able to push forward and, and give us that manpower if needed. But they've also got the skill set to push off the track into the trees, where they train all the time. It's really good actually to work with the other armies just to see what kit they've got, how they do things. Um, it's just nice to work you know, with someone with different tactics and just see how they do it. Obkovit 2, I think, we was the first time we did armoured fighting in minus 30, so it was pretty new to everyone. Um, but we had a lot of training off the mountain troop leaders um, who taught us you know, how to carry kit, use the cookers, um, get our feet dry, do some rewarming drills. So we've carried that on to Obkovit 10 and since then. It's progressed and the training's got better and we've got more um, information on how we do things better. So since Cabrit 2, a lot's changed. We've got a lot more different equipment um, to use to help us. In the tree line, the snow where it's untouched does get thick up to the knees. Um, but the, the lads, they've got the, uh, the grit, so they get through it anyway. We've got a lot of Commonwealth and the Fijian troops who have never seen snow before. So for them, it's a whole different world for them. But yeah, I think everyone's enjoying it. But at the same time, it is a graft. At the moment, we've also got uh, ourselves, the British troops, we've got the Danish, and then the Viking Company, and then we've got the Scouts Battalion, the EDL, and obviously the French Alpine Hunter Regiment. Um, I've worked with all of them so far, um, but I know the boys are really keen to work with the Danish, because um, they've got some good kit and a nice warm vehicle. So I know in the last exercise, one of the platoons worked with them. Um, they got to see hands on how they do things. Um, not so much different than what we do, but um, I think to do with kit and equipment is slightly different, that's it. They use a wheeled vehicle, as we use track vehicles, and so that's the difference. But the lads are looking forward to working with the Danes.
I think the co capability of us working together is uh, strong. The language barrier is not that uh, that big because uh, we speak quite good uh, English in, uh, in Denmark, I think at least. Uh, and um, so that's not the main difference. The main difference is how we do things, how we how we plan things, um, and uh, and I think. Um, we can learn from how the Brits are doing stuff and how we learn to do stuff. So that's quite interesting. And last week we had a short exercise also with the Brits against the Estonian, and we had uh, like a warrior company uh, working with us. And uh, it was uh, interesting to see how they use the warriors uh, compared to our uh, APCs. Um, so we learned some maneuvers we saw that worked for the Brits, and uh, we have actually tried to use some of these maneuvers. Uh, on this exercise, and it had it worked quite well. Like the main reason um, that we are looking forward to uh, working together with the Brits because we are we can learn from each other. We don't normally have these big exercises together, so it's uh, very nice to uh, work for a long period of time with uh, with you guys and the French because uh, then you see how people uh, are doing stuff more, and then you can take it, take some small bits from that and attach to our tactics. So that's very nice. This is my first time working with armoured infantry. I've not done armoured or infantry before. It's very different to my previous tours. Uh, every regiment or battalion is different. Uh, they've all got their own skill set, their own um, their own reason for being there and what they bring to the party. Um, I'm having to learn fast, I'm having to adapt fast. Um, it's very different to my previous um, uh, type, types of chaplaincy. I've worked with uh, RLC, logistics, um, I've worked with artillery, I've worked with a field hospital. Um, this is very different. So if the soldiers are on operations, you go on operations with them. Um, if the soldiers are on exercise, you go out into the field with them, or at least visit them in the field if there's not the opportunity to go out with them. Um, and you live amongst them as they do. Uh, so. Right, we wear the same uniform, we, we eat the same rations, we cook the rations in the same way, we work as part of a team. You know, if they're putting up sh troop shelters, you help put up the troop shelters. And it's all about being part of what's going on and getting amongst it. My role comes in two parts. So the pastoral care of the soldiers, regardless of their nationality or ethnicity or religion or not, and their pastoral care and their pastoral well-being and their spiritual well-being and then to be part of the moral component. So somebody that the chain of command or um, soldiers of every level can come to to ask advice um, on the moral component, on um, the rights or wrongs, uh, on ethics, on uh, questions of morality, both personal and wider effect. Working um, as much an integrated part of NATO, um, interoperability and integration are the sort of key targets of us being out here, uh, working with the Estonians, with the Danish, with the French. Um, that's different. Um, working as part of a, a European Forward Presence Battle Group, that's different to what I've done before. Um, it's a different climate, you know, all my tours have been summer tours before or hot places. This is <laughs> obviously a very different climate. This is the first time actually when we have the UK, Danes and French units operating in, in one battle group. I, I think uh, we have learned and gained a lot of experience. So the format that you showing here, the integration exercise, this is the result of the uh, learning and experience. So this is uh, uh, now built up very, let's say, uh, clearly targeted way to achieve the integration of DFP battle group in the most effective and the fastest way possible in what we can actually conduct in the first interbrigade. In their five years outstanding service in Estonia, they have contributed clearly to the deterrence effect. 